Chris Ricardo, and I'm standing here with Chris Tremel, who is creative director at Lux of Flux, and they're working on the Transformers game, the latest one based on the upcoming movie. Now, we've seen a little bit of the single player, and now you guys are showing off the multiplayer. So walk us through multiplayer, and how do you even think to, to put that in? Cool. So the multiplayer game was pretty easy for us from the very beginning. We wanted to be able to go online and battle Autobots versus Decepticons for the first time ever. It's one of the biggest requests too that we've had from fans and, and people that love the game and love the franchise. So we knew that we wanted to do something where you could fight online as a truck, as a plane, as a robot, uh, climb, jump, run, shoot. Um, and uh, so far I think we've done a pretty good job. So tell us about the multiplayer modes the game's going to have. Is it just like your standard deathmatch, or are you guys putting in some, some new twists? So we've got five different modes for the multiplayer game. We've got a standard deathmatch. We've got a great team deathmatch, which is classic Autobots versus Decepticons. We've got a control points mode, which is like a domination style game. We've got a mode called One Shall Stand, which is an assassination style where you have to take out Optimus and, oh, or Megatron. Uh, and then we've got another mode, which is called Capture the Shards, which is a take on uh, a Capture the Flag style game. So in the single player mode of the game, you all have touted that there are a ton of playable characters on the Autobot and Decepticon side. Is that going to translate over to the multiplayer, and can we expect even more characters? Yeah, it absolutely does. So the core characters that we have playable are Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Ironhide, Ratchet, and one of the first flying Autobots, Breakaway. On the Decepticon side, we've got Megatron, Starscream, Grindor, Sideways, and Longhorn. And in addition to those guys, uh, Hasbro's been kind enough to go to the vaults for us and allow us to use some really cool older styling characters as well. So we've got a playable Protectobot, a playable Ariabot, and a playable Seeker, G1 style. I'm assuming one of the challenges you guys are going to run into in multiplayer is getting people to actually work together, because you're right, all people want to do with big robots is fight each other and stomp everything. But some of your modes don't actually reward that, oddly enough. So how are you guys you know, changing the gameplay a bit to encourage folks to play nice, at least for a couple minutes? Well, when we started on the multiplayer, both factions right off the bat showed us that we probably wanted to do kind of a team-based multiplayer modes. So every character is able to transform into a unique vehicle. Each character has two unique weapons as well as a special ability. So you could think of them as kind of class-based. Ratchet's kind of a healer. Ironhide's kind of a tank. Optimus is kind of a leader character. Um, and on the Decepticon side, it's very similar. So um, we have snipers as well, and we have scout-type characters. So. Um, if you work together, you can use the different characters and combinations to a really good effect. Um, a great example is uh, using Long Haul and um, Grindor together. Long Haul has healing and he's got flamethrowers. Uh, Grindor has a great machine gun and he's also got a deployable turret. So the two of those guys together uh, are pretty formidable opponents online. Alright, well that sounds like it's going to be a lot to go through. When can we play all this at home? You can play it at home on June 23rd. You can pick up the 360, PS3, and PC and play online. We've also got a Wii, PS2, DS, and a Sony PSP version coming out the same day, day right before the film. All right, well, there you go. That is your look at the multiplayer of Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. And check the site for a lot more real soon.